And welcome back, everybody. Second episode of Season 2, 25 North Podcast. What's going on? It's your GM, Jason. I'm here. I am probably quite loud on the microphone, but due to audio normalization, I'm probably not as loud as in your ears as I am in my own ears. What's happening, crew? What's what's going on? How's it going? My brother just got home from college. Nice. Howdy, howdy. Like during the middle of the break, I walked down and I was like, oh, hey, my brother's here. And he was like, hey, what's up? Oh, hey, what's going on? Yeah. Essentially, that's what his voice is. It's a pretty accurate, <laughs> pretty yeah, accurate like, uh, super impression. Accurate. Literally, he just looked at me like, oh, hey. Then just looked back at his phone. He was on TikTok. And I'm like, ah, see, nothing has changed. <laughs> <laughs> It's got Big him. shout out to Lunar's brother for coming home over break, question mark. Yeah, uh, it's he's moving into a new apartment, actually. All right. Uh, nice. Cool. Nice. Currently helping out. His apartment's so nice, too. It's got a fucking, like, lake next to it, like, with a ski, like, ramp. Like a wakeboard there. It's yeah. insane. Oh, and he's like, yeah, a, it's, no, it's no big deal. That's a good question. How about that? We'll do that. For, what's the nicest <laughs> place you guys have ever lived, like... Oh. Uh, nice. Colorado Springs, Colorado. I oh, love that nice. house. Yeah, beautiful area. Nicest place I've ever lived. I've the problem is I've moved to so many houses. I'm not military. I've moved to a lot of houses. It sucks. Uh, so they've all kind of blurred into one just morphous mob. Uh, I currently would have to say, I guess, living in San Antonio, the house that I currently live in, because it's been really nice. The neighbors are really sweet and nice to me. I've gotten to like help babysit the kids around the neighborhood, too. It's nice. Really nice. Very cool. Corey. I've got I've got an unfair advantage. I currently live in yeah. Canmore, yeah. Alberta, just outside of Banff National Park. <laughs> it's it's That's- about as picturesque as you can get here. Um between the the ponds, rivers, creeks, mountains, trees, and just generally laid back lifestyle, it's it's hard to not live in kind of awe of, of the beauty here, even after being here for eight months or however long it's been. Nice. <clears throat> what about you, Rachel? I haven't lived in exciting places. I've lived around here and also a little bit in Wisconsin. <laughs> I did live in California nearby Anaheim at one point. That was really nice. Very cool. Yeah, I I was a military brat, so I lived all over the place. But I do have to say there's something really nice about owning your own house. So that that's probably going to be my choice is the, my current place, even though we are planning to, within the next few years, build our own house. So that's probably going to be my choice in a few years after we build our own house. Hey, if you need anyone to help you out with like the cabinet vibes and designs, I got you, man. Nice. Nice. Yeah. We're, um, we're planning on doing like a super like green and eco-friendly efficient house. So, um, like getting like a two acre lot so like that we can have, um, a solar array in the yeah. backyard and then then also one on, on the rooftop and then um <clears throat> you know build like those the um make use of like the greenhouse effect for warm for warmth and using like the topiary bushes my wife was looking at all this stuff so like you, the way you can landscape your your trees and your bushes to create airflow in the summer Ooh. for like a na- natural airflow through the house yeah so it, it's going to be it's as eco-friendly and off the grid and self-sustainable as possible as possible as you can get in minnesota yeah because you know of course in february when it's negative 35 degrees yeah so that's so cold god i could not imagine that how about you come and visit in in february jackson and honor No, thank you. Laughs in Canadian. All right. You two can have it. We had our polar plunge that made us all lose power for like three days, essentially. And my God. How cold was was it? Jackson, how cold it was? It was like minus 10 Fahrenheit, right? I think it was. Oh, you're muted. You were muted, Jackson. I think around us, it only got to like 
uh, I don't even think it broke negatives near no, us. No, you're like, right. It didn't break negatives. We were like yeah, down to like, like 20. 10 degrees. Yeah. yeah, like 20, like 10 degrees. But my God, <laughs> Texas power grid wasn't built for that. <laughs> Apparently, so just for a little bit of reference, also worked, wasn't uh, also like, wasn't upkept. No, not no, even close. Not even no. close. Yeah, it was I, I've bad. worked I've worked outdoors in temperatures colder than minus fifty point eight Fahrenheit. No, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I believe you. Absolutely <laughs> yeah. not. I'm it, it, it wasn't great. I'm not saying I want to do that anymore ever again. But I will. Yeah, Canadian winters are something special. Sometimes. That being said, uh, yeah, Jason. Rachel get a lot of the similar weather effects where they are. Yep. Um, yep. We feel you. We feel you. Yeah. They're, they're pretty much Canadians. Just <laughs> south, of, south of an imaginary line. Yeah. We're, we're Southern Canadians. Yep. Uh, I like to think of them as buffer states. Yeah. Mi- Minnesota is basically, <laughs> Minnesota could, could basically be considered part of Canada for all I care. That'd be nice. We can switch that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, not to stray into taboo subjects. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So, um, that being said, our last episode, who wants to re who wants to recap? Let's see if we can have a player recap this time. Anybody want to recap? (laughs) Give you a hero point. Zaba Zaba can recap. (laughs) Zaba does the recap. He's like, all right, listen up. This is the four one one folks. (laughs) Yeah. So, Corey, the player of Zaba. Sorry, I'm just getting him a m- mindset of that <laughs> brand new character. Um, the party assembled upon the deck of the boat, which name I can't remember all of a sudden. Chromatic Orb. Jewel, the chromatic, chromatic something. C- chromatic Queen. That's the one. I was I'm, a Chromatic Orb. I'm going to write, th- write that down. You know what? I was there when we got it and everything. You think I'd have this. Uh, the party was assembled aboard the deck of the Chromatic Queen. As we made our way from Rumplank to the neighboring settlement across the way, which held our first clue towards solving the puzzle of the Jewel of the Indigo Isles. Upon reaching there, we went with a number of the local um, nobility, were granted access to their culinary institute and library. Um, upon arriving there, encountered a uh, Bedraggled, Orpok, um, Sue Scholar. I wanted to call, Sue, Sue Scholar. Sue's- thank you. I, I wanted to call him a Maitre D, but that felt very wrong. Um, who informed us that we could access the maps and the archives located to the right, um, but there was a ghost. Not that we're worried about it, but that they had to go due to the fact there was a murder further in. Un. Against Saba's best intentions and recommendations, the party decided to venture in after the ghost, rather than investigating the murder first. So, they made their way into the archive, and there was a spooky ghost, a wraith-like figure shrouded in, dark smoke pouring over pages and books um, within. And that's kind of where we left off. Did I miss anything important? Other than names of things, but I'm still wrapping my name around those. I don't like I think think you got everything. You got, um, you got the, did you talk about the kelp points that you got some resources? Oh, I skipped the kelp points. Uh, With our future venturing on the boat, we were introduced to a new side mechanic, kelp points. Um, Essentially, the party is going to be able to gather kelp on our seaward journeys. Um, for later use yet to be determined. Thanks to a fantastic roll on Zaba's part, and then all right rolls from the rest of the party, we managed to get away with five kelp points on our first harvest session, which netted us one twine kelp and one netweed. Whatever those do, we'll find out. Netweed is just internet uh, doobies, but like that's besides the point. (laughs) (laughs) I've ordered a lot of those. Ah, Let's go. So we're now tracking kelp points, monster parts, and good boy tokens. Good boy tokens are unrelated. Those are side side note. They're all three but things we're tracking, though. The Very holy important. trifecta. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm glad somebody's paying attention. Mm-hmm. All right. So, la- and the very last thing we did 
was everybody was added to the initiative tracker. Now, for our new players, you will see on the tab called Encounters, which is two crossed swords. From there, you can roll. There's a D20 button. You can roll that for your character. Now, what that'll do is that'll default to the skill check perception. Because in, in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, we do not use initiative. We don't have our own initiative. Um, instead, it's whatever you are doing at that time is used as your initiative. Most And most of the time, it's perception because you're walking around looking for things when you encounter a baddie. This also kind of is, an, is, is an, this, the way the system handles like um, ambushes and sneaking is you okay. would roll stealth. And your, the enemy would roll perception. And so if your stealth is higher than their perception, ergo, you go first. So that's kind of how like sneaking and ambushing is handled in second edition, is by rolling those for your, your initiative checks. Okay. So um, in this case, I would say that you could just roll perception because you were starting to look through the pages looking for the maps. You weren't exactly looking for the maps at that point in time, so you don't need to roll nature or anything like that. You can just We'll just default to perception. And the baddie's going to roll as well. So I roll perception as well? Yeah, just, <laughs> just hit the button. Okay. Whoa! Still and I tied. Let's go! Oh, I think that was a blind GM roll, my bad. And that's okay. I can I can show it. I can reveal it. And last, we need... Oh, we do have Zavas. Yeah. Oh, there's four PCs now. I gotta, I, I'm not used to that. All right. So let's go ahead and start the encounter. Boom. And we've rolled for combat. And let's go and... Vesuviak, you are the first one to react when this ghost materializes. Oh, boy. Also, I see I, I changed the, the icon, the, the yeah. turn tracker icon. It's yeah. now a ship's wheel. That's cute. I love that. Okay. Um. Okay, let's see. Does this thing seem immediately hostile? Well, it looks exactly the way you described it before. That's a ghost that with a venom face. and It looks like the, you were told about a ghost in this thing. In this room, so yeah. Um, but it's not like lunging at us or anything. It, it just materialized right now. I think Vesuviak wants to take a move to uh, just get ten feet out of the way of the door, so that way uh, Zaba can get in. <laughs> okay, so if your first action is going to be to stride. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then I just move where I want to go. Correct. Yep. And I'll and. Um, It'll track how, how long it is. So as you drag your token, it'll track how long. So that that was one action. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Crap, trying to think of what to do here. Oh, boy. I think Vesuviac just if wants you, to talk to it. If you want to spend one action to recall knowledge, you can do that as well. Which um, would be to try to identify what this thing is. Oh, yeah, let's do that. So, in that case, roll me a secret occultism or religion check. Oh, yeah, religion, let's go. Yeah, okay. Baby. Uh, secret check, you said. All right. Correct. Let's get there. Uh, religion. Okay. There you go. excellent roll. That is a success. So you know that this thing is what's called a ghost writer. And I can reveal it to you now. This is a ghost writer. This is a chaotic, evil, incorporeal, undead spirit. And I will give you one question. What do you want to know about it? And you can ask things like um, does it have any immunities? Does it have any resistances? Does it have any weaknesses? Does it have any special abilities? What's its highest save? What's its lowest save? 
Stuff like that. You can... What, what would you like to know about it? What's its lowest save? Its lowest save is its fortitude save. Okay, good to know. All right, so that's your second action. Um... If you don't know what to do for your third, maybe raise your shield. That increases oh, yeah. your AC. I'll raise my shield. All right, and then that will be all three of your actions, and we will go to the Ghost Rider. The Ghost Rider, first action. What's it going to do? I think it's going to... Okay. It's going to cast a spell. How about that? Not a fan. Ghost Rider casts everyone's a, a critic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's going to cast a spell and it's going to place these 20 foot burst. And it oh, it can see cell from where it, where it's at. It's going to place it right there to get cell as well. Hmm. Oh. Convenient. Look well, at that spell well. animation. Boo. That's yeah. cool. That's really awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to need all four of you to make that fortitude save that should be in the chat window. Uh, oh, I'm pretty sure I'm immune to those. Fortitude, oh, fortitude saves. Uh, yeah. Handy. That'd be awesome. Ooh, I'm it good at be. these. Holy smokes. Let's go. <laughs> the with a nat 20. 29 total. All right, so Syl, Zaba, and Timothy all failed. Wow! Whoa. But that's a... Uh, so I just want to say, uh, Zaba failed with a 21 for the listeners out there. So you saw the Ghost Rider um, start waving its hand, and then it opened its jaws like venom, and it's in its mouth opened way bigger than it should have as it like spewed out this glob and it hit the ground and it erupted into this stinking cloud. A and ghostbuster thing. What's mm -hmm. that? Like a ghostbuster thing. And and so we have three failures. So Timothy, uh, Syl, Ew. and Zaba are all sickened one as well as slowed one while in the cloud. Gross. Stinky. So while you're in the cloud, you have all these effects. Now, um, the cloud functions as a scaring mist as well. So, uh, the, con so you, the concealed condition. So anybody in the cloud is concealed to anybody outside of the cloud and vice versa. Anybody outside of the cloud is concealed to anybody inside the cloud. So that was two actions. Mm -hmm. And this thing, what's it gonna do for its third and final action? So we're gonna remove that because it cast it. And I think for its third action, it will attempt to, it's gonna move. And we will pass the turn to Zaba. They will, uh step back five feet outside of cloud so you so you now you are no longer sickened and no longer slowed but you only have one action because at this when you're slowed you the first thing that happens is you lose one action yes this so, is true so you I, uh, you're down to your second action which was a step and now you got I one will, more action left I will draw my my weapon one handed using an interact action to draw my sword. One of my swords. Sounds great. And we will turn, we will pass the turn to Timothy Bono. Mr. So you lose your first action. Yes. Uh, well, Timothy doesn't like how fucking stinky it is in here. He's gonna fucking move. I have my full movement. So I'm gonna move, I guess, yeah, just so that way, less in the cloud. I'm moving my 20 feet, so I'm no longer in the stink cloud. More into the library, into the archive yes. wing. 
Yes, I moved more into the library. I think what happens is like Timothy is just like, oh, gross, and just like holds his mouth as he runs through, like further into the library from the door. Uh, and oh, sorry. So you guys should still be sickened one. You're only oh, slowed okay. one while you're in the cloud. You're still sickened one. Disgusting. And then so how good. you can get rid of sickened is by spending one action to like vomit, essentially, to retch, <laughs> to try to get rid of that sickened condition, which is basically you force yourself another fortitude save to get rid of it. Okay. And what's the negative side effect about sickened? I'm trying to figure it out. Basically, minus one to everything. Ah, oh, hmm. That kind of sucks. So yeah, you take a status you penalty. you feel real gross. You take a status penalty equal to the value of the second, which is in this case one, on all of your checks and all of your DCs. Yeah, Timothy doesn't like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a throw up. <laughs> I'm gonna make a throw up. All right. Uh, so just make a, f- here, let me. Another fortitude one? Yep. Yeah, just right. just click that fortitude save. The one that's for Timothy Bono. Yeah. Up, up. Ooh, Fuck. still failed. So you you like force your fingers down your throat and puke, but you're still not able. Still not quite able. Uh, that was a thirteen on the die too. Yeah. Too much liquor. No nah, man, yeah, it's just all liquor that's coming up. It's like, oh god, that burns. But you're not slowed anymore, so that's good. Yeah. Now we go to now we go to Syl. Yeah, I was also not in the room yet, and there's really no point in rushing through forty feet of cloud only to have no weapon. So I will also step back and, out of the cloud. And you're no longer slowed, but you're still second. Right, and draw a weapon, which is cards. And, yeah, glare at Saba. <laughs> oh, you want to uh, place a bet on if the two newbies survive? No, we're gonna help them in a minute. Oh, going in? I yeah. figured you were letting them explore the library to prove their worth. Well, you could do that too, I suppose. I told you I am more help in library. I told we're not killing ghost. Vesuviak, you are up. You have all of your actions, and you're not sickened. Let's go! Uh, <laughs> let's see. But you're still in the cloud, so everybody's obscured to you. Or you're, everybody's concealed to you, and vice versa. Um, let me think through this really quick here. Let me double check one spell. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up. There's a lot to this. If I move, does that lower my shield? Well, your shield your shield goes down at the beginning of your turn anyway. So, okay, automatically. Um, in that case, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the stride action, mm-hmm. and I'm going to move uh, over next to Timothy. I'm going to step out of the cloud, see Timothy, and move mm-hmm. over uh, right next to him. Mm-hmm. Hey, bud. And then I'm going to uh, cast Forbidding Ward on Timothy. Oh. Ooh, nice. So that way, uh, this will take two actions as Vesuviak actually has to stand up, grab his, uh, a- and uh, use his uh, divine symbol to uh, ward off Timothy. So now you get a lot of good stuff. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, let's and, see. And so I clicked it. So this is a cantrip. So for Lunar, you can grab that spell effect from the chat and drag it onto your token. There you go. Look at that. Ooh. Okay. Oh, hell yeah. That's nice. Yep. So you ward an ally against the attacks of a hostile s- of, of attacks and hostile spells from the target enemy, obviously from the Ghost Rider. The, the ally gains a status bonus to armor class, plus one, and plus one to saving throws against the anim- enemy's effects and spells and other effects. All right. That's nice. Beautiful turn. So, now the Ghost Rider's going to go. And in this case, the Ghost Rider will... 
He does not have any... Hmm. Oh, well, that was the only AoE spell, I believe. Let me see here. No. There is one more spell. Uh -oh. And he will cast... Sleep. I'm He's gonna cast Sleep. First thing, he's gonna move up 20 feet, and then he's gonna cast Sleep. Skaboosh. Nice. <laughs> so I'm gonna need both of you to uh, make that well save that's in the chat. Okay. Bless up. Public roll for this one? Yeah, yeah. Just to be able to click that button. All right, let's see. Oh, oh 19. Oh, wait, that's right, I forgot. This is a thing with Timothy. Oh. Critical oh. success with Timothy. Look at that. That um, that forbidding ward. Yeah. Made it a critical shit. success. Let's holy go. Shit. Oh my goodness. You helped me out. You so Timothy is completely unaffected, but um, Vesuviac will take a minus one penalty to all perception checks for one round as you get a little bit sleepy. But okay, not completely. You don't fall asleep, thankfully. You've been afflicted and at this, the ghost rider just hisses at you as neither of you were able to fall asleep. He's like, <sighs> and we will pass the turn over to Zaba. Okay. I uh, will spend round retching. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw up See if I can't shake this sick end. Uh, 23. And let me double check. To, it's, Sorry, I should have just scrolled up. That is a fail because you're sickened. It would have been a success if you weren't sickened. Lame! 24. Man, a 24 on this is nutty. Jesus. It, w it, it was his highest level spell. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah at least sense. it used okay. it now. Thank God. Yeah. I uh, will use my second action to uh, draw my extremely large trident and uh, just get ready to go in next round. So, you have so one, that'll be one uh, weapon in one hand and a trident in the other. Yeah, I am currently wielding in one hand. I have a bastard sword and in the other hand, I have a trident. All right made of rot skull parts. Yes. It's got a cool gothic motif, I imagine. Lots of skulls. Yeah, yeah. I love the, the Monster Hunter vibe. Alright, Mr. Bono. Mr. Bono uh, is very thankful to his homie for not, for helping him not be inflicted with EP. Um, <laughs> I am... Oh, I'm trying to think of the there's, there's a million things I want to do. Uh, I need, I know I need to take out my wand actually to do mm -hmm. things I need to do. So I guess that is one of my actions. I take out my wand. Yeah, you can draw your wand. Yeah. Uh, how did I show that? I'm trying to figure that out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, yes. Okay. So, Timothy takes out his wand. That's his first action. I guess his second action would be to recall war? To, to um, oh, exploit oh, vulnerability? No. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, that is what I'm wanting to do. I think, and I think exploit vulnerability, is it uh, only one action? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is only one action. So, so. Timothy's going to do exploit vulnerability. All right, yes. so... Let's see here. Frequency, once per round, you're holding your implement, which is your wand, which you just yes. drew. You yes. scour your experiences and and learning to identify something that might repel your foe. You retrieve an object for, uh, from your esoterica with the mm -hmm. appropriate supernatural qualities and use that, and then use your implement to stroke, to stoke the remnants of its power into blaze. Select a creature you can see and attempt an esoteric lore check. Yes. So we're gonna, um... So you're gonna target? So... Yes. 
So yeah, so click on your token, and then okay. yeah, T to target the Ghost Rider, and then T there should be a button at the bottom in the chat calls use esoteric lore. So click on that. Yes, I've got that, and then I'm using, uh, or it says exploit vulnerability. Oh yeah, that's use exploit. That's, that's what I mean. Use exploit vulnerability. Sorry, my bad. Uh. <laughs> that's a failure. So fail it. He rolled a three on the die, unfortunately. Yeah. Failing to recall a salient weakness about the creature, you instead attempt to exploit a more personal vulnerability. You can exploit only using the creature's personal antithesis. Your unarmed and weapon strikes against the creature also become magical if they weren't already. Okay. So, there you go. So you have your personal antithesis on this bad boy now. Which isn't okay. bad, because it's, I uh, believe, um... Plus two? Yes. I'm trying to see it right now. Sorry. Give me a second. Yeah, personal Ooh. antithesis, I believe, is a plus two to damage. And that that yes. failure wasn't that bad. That was... To two plus half my level. So it's plus four. Yeah. Yeah, plus four to damage is not bad. Oh, boy. So you got okay. one more action. Yes, I do. Um. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. That's crazy. That was on a fail. Wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to think. It is. No, 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 no. You guys are you guys are brand new to the system. You're good. Yeah. You can try to scare it. Use. What Timothy's wanting to do. So yeah, you can try intimidation. So just yeah. use um here. I believe. Let me. There is. Let me throw that on your sheet. I'm going to throw an action on your sheet called um, Demoralize. Yes. Okay, let's see. There, I threw that on your sheet, so you should yes. have that now. I do Now, see you got to be able to speak the language it speaks. So, you can attempt. Yeah, I'm so, going to... Speak common, I guess. Yeah. Let's see if it speaks common. Timothy, I think, raises his wand as like a gesture to like point at him. Obviously he's not using his wand for uh, like actually casting a spell, but more along the lines look even more intimidating. And for like the entire time the party has like seen Timothy so far, he's been like kind of chill, relaxed. That completely drops and you see a scowl form on his face. And he says, stand down spirits. Before I have to do something I don't want to do. All right. Intimidate this fool. <gasps> oh, that sucks. Oh. I'm sick. Fuck. You uh. failed by one because you're sick. Ah! Oh no. Oh, and he's immune to your to Timothy's demoralized for the rest of the combat. Boo! All right. Oh, because <laughs> you're sick, you failed by one. Oh no. Why does God hurt his strongest warriors? Oh. <laughs> uh, all right, well, so. Yeah, I will drop into my stance so I can actually use these cards as a weapon and then start stumbling through. Hold this. your breath and move through. Yeah, <laughs> so running forwards and then straight through will be a total of 45 so that's all my actions to get into this room oh because you mm. dropped it to your stance okay yeah and so i'm ending up a little bit behind timothy timothy waves says hey this thing's not scared of me anymore that's good nah i tried to make it scared of me didn't work round number Next. three vesuviac do you want to maintain do you want to sustain the forbidding ward on timothy or do you want to let it drop? You got to spend an action to sustain it. Um, let's see. I think I'm gonna sustain it because now I get the feeling that uh, Timothy might be a target now. <laughs> the human had a cocky nature to him. What? What? Okay. Yeah, right. It's insane. I can't believe it. Um. <laughs> the fall of man. Could this be it? <laughs> and then for my next trick. Um. I think I want to cast fear on him. Ooh. Beautiful. So, yeah. I'm going to 
how do I go about this? I just click him. So yeah, so T to target. So target the target the baddie. Uh, okay. <laughs> and there then so you go to your spells, to your drop down on in spells, and then just click fear, and it should pop up in the chat, and then it'll have all the windows and stuff. Okay, for some reason my spells don't have anything that's dropped down, but I'm looking at my character sheet so I can do it there. Yeah, you can just hit the cast button next to fear. All right. All right. And I will make that saving throw. Here we go. Prayer. Oh, prayer's <laughs> different. <laughs> the critical uh, success from the ghost rider. That sucks. Ghost ain't afraid of no dragon. A plus 14. Good God. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's your turn. It tried to afflict EP on you. It knows that you are it cannot, uh, or it's not afraid of you. And in turn, the ghost rider, speaking in common, oh. says, I see we have another caster here. Well, how about, how about we just have ourselves a little bit of a, little bit of a competition? And he will target Vesuviac who attempted to cast Adam and will spend all three of its actions to cast Magic Missile. No, I, I gotta do it, so... Select other variants, so... Huh. So one missile. Two missile. And three missiles. So, total of eight damage. Not great. Not, well, yeah, not great, but not bad either. Yeah, it could have been all fours. Yeah. I'll take a one and two twos. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And that was its turn. Did you take all that damage? So on your um, uh, do I put that on my sheet? Yeah, so you can um. I didn't move, but so you have to uh, click the damage button right in the chat box. Yeah, you can just click damage, and it'll put it on your sheet right away. Okay, damage. Uh, Miss, yeah, do it for all of them. I don't know why it says I take cover. I did nothing. There we go. All right, that was the Ghost Rider's turn, and we go to Zaba now. Is Zaba just sick forever? It doesn't naturally fall off. You're sick until you retch. Uh, I already failed at doing that once. It would look bad on me if I didn't go in. Join us in the stinky room. Single. <laughs> double. So technically in the cloud, because no, no, okay. it's, he's not in any no. of the affected squares. So that's and two that's actions. I, uh, suddenly fried. I am, I am here in the room, and there's a ghost. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna stab the ghost. You're not raging yet, but yeah, you can stab nope, the ghost. Nope. Just a regular stab. Stab the ghost. Whoa. Oh jeez. Well, that's a hit. So roll some damage. I'm surprised it's not a critical. I rolled pretty good. That's a 29 to stab out with my rot skull trident. Resulting in, all right, damage at uh, 15 points. 15 points of damage. And it took some of that damage, not all of it. Some. It took some. Some. That's what matters to Zaba. He hasn't seen anybody else hit this thing. Not that he's been able to see into the room. True, true. This is the first damage it's taken. Yeah. But now we go to Timothy, who has that personal antithesis. Yes. Uh, oh, God. I'm trying to think. Personal antithesis. Yeah, I'm going to. Timothy shrugs his shoulders like, all right, you asked for this, bud. And he is going to do his fling magic. That's two actions, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Yeah. Uh, so I am holding my wand, as I have previously stated. Uh, I fling magical energy at a target within 60 feet, dealing damage equal to 1d4 plus my Riz modifier to a target. Uh, 
He's got to beat a DC 19 reflex save. Uh, damage type selected. Oh, that's right. I got to select the damage, right? So yeah, your wand. So yes. You, yes. your wand is what kind of what kind of wand did we give you? We gave you the wand of shrouded step. So yeah, it's it's up to you. Uh, force damage, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I'll say force damage. I cast the I cast the Phantom Wars on you. Woo, spooky. Uh, Phantom Menace, that's the one. Uh, okay. Yes. And at third level and every other level thereafter, the damage is increased by 1d4. So, um... Yes. All right, so first thing it's got to do is got to make that save. So let's see. Yeah. Oh, I got to roll it. <laughs> Ooh, that's no! A, it's a su- no! It's a success, meaning it'll take half that damage. So uh, you can click that level boost to damage button. That level damage, yeah. At the bottom, loop, level, oh, level boost to damage, yes. Ooh. Ooh, 10. So it'll take half of it because um, it was a success. Yeah. It was force damage. Uh, All right, well... All right, it took some damage. Okay. Uh, so I have one thing left that I can do. Try to get rid of that second. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. Because that would have made your DC a twenty instead of a nineteen. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do that. Uh, I guess I make that fortitude saving throw. Yeah, yes. yeah, I can. Just make a fortitude. Just roll fortitude save, and I'll. Mm, twenty-one. That doesn't pass it. I know it doesn't because I rolled it the last time. Yeah, you didn't. Almost. Getting close. It's like flirting with uh, getting no more sick, no more upset Tell me. <laughs> All right, Syl, you're up. Yeah, I will push forward past Timothy. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Uh-huh, I can get within range. Um, not quite to the flank position, so I will use twin paint. There it is. So yes, first attack is not uh, flat-footed. All right, so that first attack will be a miss. The whole on, let me make it flat-footed for you. The second attack is he's flat-footed. All right, my map uh, things are just saying N A N, so I don't know if this works or not. Doesn't matter. That was a natural one. Great, highly effective. But that map did work. It said minus four. It did? Yeah. Okay, I don't know why it's just not displaying. Okay. All right, so yeah, so it comes up and it's try, you're trying to hit, you're trying to hit like smoke and it's just whiffing right through. Missed. All right, Mr. Vesuviak the Molten. Okay. Um, so in terms of concentration spells, is that a one at a time type deal? What do you mean? Like, can I only have one concentration spell up at a time? No, concentration just means that you can't... You, there are certain conditions that will make you... Where you can't do concentration, things that require concentration. For example, a barbarian can't cast any spells while it's raging because it has the concentration check. A barbarian can't do anything that has the concentration trait while they're raging. Okay. Uh, in that case, then, I'm going to take one action to sustain the concentration I have on uh, the, the uh, what was it called? Forbidding Ward? That's the one. I'm going <laughs> to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm going to take the stride action to move right here to just kind of get in the middle of everybody, make sure I'm in a good spot. Mm-hmm. Um... Let's see. And then I want to take uh, an action to raise my shield. All right. Sounds good. And the ghost rider is going to go. They are going to step away for one and then target Sill with telekinetic maneuver. Whoa. Oh, that's a critical success on that trip. <laughs> so you fall prone. 
Okay. And take 1d6 damage. <laughs> for the critical. <laughs> Just four. As the, you saw the ghost, as it came out, as it moved away, it whipped out this smoke tendril, grabbing your your leg, and just completely ripped it out from underneath you. And it lets out a cackle. Zaba! Zaba! <sighs> well, I'm faced with a few choices here. Well, well, well. Uh, mostly, I this bugger has managed to force a move action out of me. So with that, instead of just stepping, I'm going to take a full move action. It's the same action economy and proceed directly to the south and get right up in his grill um, with one action. And then for my second action, I, uh, I'm i going to hit him with my sword this time. Okay. Natural two. I did very bad. It was a miss. Oh, yep. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's Zaba the Sicken's turn. <laughs> well, you have one more action. I am sickened. I stepped and then I strike. You're not slowed. You're sickened. Oh, well, crap. Uh, I will strike again. If I had been paying more attention, I would have done something goals. else. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough. And that's a second critical miss. Ow. Zaba's really good at combat. Oh, but he's nerfed. All right, Mr. Bono. Mr. Bono's gonna make a move. He's gonna... I almost said he's like... Or not five, sorry. I'm trying to move my mouse. It decided to be a bastard. Uh, I guess that's five. That's 15 right here. Yeah, he's gonna move up to be right next to Sil so that way he can also look at this ghost. Mm-hmm. Um... That's his one action, and then his next action, because he saw that fling magic actually worked on this thing. He's gonna do fling magic again. Ooh, nice. Uh, he's gonna make sure to once again do force damage. Well, yeah, you think you can only do force damage with this wand, right? Okay. If you have another wand, you can pull that one out and choose a different. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, gotta make that. Yeah, gotta make that <laughs> 19. Equal to with, okay. Damage is a type you selected when you gained your wand implement. Oh, okay, so yeah. Yeah, then. force is the best one anyway. Yeah. Would have uh, been force. Hands down. Oh, shoot, I keep doing <laughs> that. <laughs> I love it, it's funny every time. Oh, Ooh. wait, oh. wait. Oh, it's a success, so I'll do half damage again. Pissy. All right, level boosted damage. Let's go. Hey. So that's twelve. And don't forget your personal antithesis, which is another oh, you're four. Right. You're right. So yeah, you should you should actually be uh, have the implements empowerment checked. Oh, okay. Yes. So, so make sorry. Sure. No, that's fine. That's fine. So that'll be a total of sixteen. Mm-hmm. And it succeeded. Halved. So it'll take half. Yeah. So. Half force damage. <laughs> Let's go. All right. That's... I think Timothy, as he's slinging this spell to him, while he's or flanging it to the Ghost Rider, he's going to say, if I were you, uh, just stand down. But obviously, you're your own spirit. Do as what you will. Yeah. What the fuck do I know? All right, so that was Timothy's turn. So we will pass to Syl. Yes. Oh, this Ghost Rider's taking some damage. Yeah. Stand up. For one. You <laughs> step or walk forward ten feet so that I have a flank with Saba. And see if I can't slice this thing. Oh my goodness. That's a hit. Hey, a 19 was nearly a hit and not a critical hit. That's well, because you're second. <laughs> 14 damage. It will... It's taking it's all take... of it. <laughs> yeah, it's taking all <laughs> it's of it, right? It's only taking some of it. Uh-huh. 
That sounded like it's in our favor. Well, I mean, it's okay. a, it's it's a ghost. It doesn't have any <laughs> any body parts for you to precisely attack. Yeah. <laughs> Another one of these, I see. <laughs> All right, you got one more action. No, you stepped. No, moved I and stood stuck. up. Okay. I was like, why is it taking so little? Ah, that's why. Mm-hmm. All right, now this thing is flanked and it doesn't like it, so it will. Um... Wait, wait, it's Vesuviac. I clicked end and then I think you advanced the turn thing. All right, Vesuviac, you're up. All right, uh, let's see here. Um, you could go up and touch it. Did Dimothy uh, lose his second effect? No, he still has it. Okay. Um, I'm going to drop concentration on the uh, other spell I had on him. So getting getting rid of Forbidding Ward. Okay. Yes. So not um, spending an action. Gotcha. I'm going to take the stride action to move 10 feet to get right here. Okay, that's your first. Uh, then I am going to take my second action to cast Guidance on Timothy. Okay. So that way he can get that little extra boost. Thank you. Uh, and then I would like to uh, cast another spell and uh, cast Harm against the ghost. All right. Uh, a one action harm? Yes. I just harm? click on it, right? Yeah. You want to cast harm? Harm does negative. Heal oh, wait. Yes, yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, let's see. You'd want to cast heal on the ghost because that would do a damage to it because it's undead. I'll cast heal then. Uh, my spell's just broke. Give me one second. <laughs> I'll cast a one action heal. Thank you for the correction. <laughs> yeah. So you get yeah. So just um. So target target the ghost and then hit the one action heal. Up. Oh, my bad. Okay. Uh. T to, to click on the ghost token. Just hit T to target. Okay. It is targeted and then one action heal. All right. So it needs to make a fortitude save, which we know it's its lowest. But I rolled a seventeen, so that's a success. So you can roll the damage. And, um, which just roll the healing, and then I'll just take half of that. Oh! <laughs> Good lord! Okay, that's 15. It'll take half of it. Okay. Yeah, this thing, this thing just, yeah, wow. Did not like it. It and I believe- screeches and hisses in pain as you start pouring positive energy into it. Awesome. And... Uh, this thing, well, what's it going to do? It's going to lash out because it's, it, it's, it got seared with positive energy and it's going to, first thing it's going to do, it's going to lash out with, it's just going to attempt to strike at Vesuviac with its ghostly quill. Yeah, it definitely hits. <laughs> that is 16 negative damage. Oh, I do take that. So yeah. Yep. It's going to do it again. Because you just did some mean things to it. And it misses on its second attack. Okay. And it's going to try to move away for its third attack. And there are no, like, attacks of opportunity, right? If you have a reaction that will trigger when the enemy moves away, you can use it. Let me double check. I think uh, Zaba might with no escape, right? Uh, I don't know if I have... Oh, I do have no escape. Uh, let me just verify what that does. You might have to be raging in order to use it. Yeah, you have to be raging, because it's a rage trait. That makes sense. So you can't use it yet. Alright, so we go... Now we go to Zaba, though, so... All three of your actions? Oh, for Zaba? Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, what is my reach on this guy? 
I believe he is within range for me to poke him with my trident, but not make any additional attacks. So instead, I will take a step action, or a move action. Stride. Let's go with stride. That sounds right. Yeah. Get up in his junk, you, and I will... Are you going to rage take first? A, no. Okay. I think I'm just going to hold the rage for now. But I am going to raise both weapons and plunge them into a plunge them into him simultaneously. Oh, did oh that not work? okay. Uh, unfortunately, the double strike quick key button I have doesn't work, so I will have to just roll it's, uh, yeah. the first one. This will be at map. Oh, there we go. So you yeah, make two strikes. Each one, each with, uh, one with each of your two weapons, each using your current multiple attack penalty, which is none. So both of them will be Perfect. at your full base attack. Uh, the second strike will be with the trident, which does not have the agile trait, so I will take a minus two penalty on it. Okay. So, yeah. First one, with the wet, with the bastard sword. Is a will hit. Will be a 23. Meets beats. And then I will give you the second one here. This one will be at a minus oh, two. Oh, I forgot to take the minus two off of it, so that'll be a, a 24. But that's still a hit. Perfect. So we combine that damage for the purposes of, of um, damage reduction. So, so that'll that is be tw tw 29. Okay. And these are both magic... 14 of which is slashing, and 15 of which is piercing. And these are both magical weapons, right? Correct. Okay, so... That's then... It'll be 29 minus 5 is 24. Oof. Huge hit. Huge, massive hit as you see that little blood splatter, but it's not actually going to be blood. It's going to be like bluish, smokyish ectoplasm. Ooh. Now we go to Timothy. Hey, you know, it, uh, it appears I'm good at killing ghosts, too. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, Timothy, uh, I'm going to try to make that fortitude save again. Cause I'm sick and tired of this shit not working. Oh yeah, you can get it. You could take the plus one then from the guidance. Yeah. Uh, which I plan on doing. So let's see. Uh. So yes. All right. I roll. Oh, 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 Straight oh, oh. fortitude. Yeah. Sorry. I was trying to roll it. You're good. And then the plus one. To guidance. Whoa. No longer sick, I think, because I got a 23. Plus one from Guidance is a meets beats. Oh. You're no longer sickened. Yes! Let's go! <laughs> Finally! Um, okay. And where I am at currently, would I still be able to do fling magic without hurting my homies? Yes, so. it will just have cover. It'll have, um, lesser cover. Okay. Let me, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it'll just have a plus one to, um, and plus one to AC because of the, because there's a big ass frog demon in front of it. Well, cool. AC don't matter because it's got to make that save, sucker. True. Uh, True. Let me, I guess, throw the. I there it is. Boom. I've done it. Aha. I love the animation for that thing. It's so cool. Uh, I had a higher see. reflex save now, too. Yeah. Oh, oh, still succeeded. It's still half damage. Yeah. Uh, force damage oh, don't to forget this to, Don't forget to check your yes, empower I implement. I uh, did it, uh, check off implement empowerment. Nice. Ooh, baby. That's a 12, suckers. All right. And no, it takes, it has to take that damage. It was voice. Oof. Oh, barely, barely standing. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, my specialty won't help much, but I will move up and attempt to slash it. 
I mean, I it's easier sure. to hit when you flank still. Well, there's no... Oh, can I flank there? I thought the bookshelves were yeah, in the way. Yeah, you can squeeze in there. Uh, I think it might be too far away. All right. 30 feet, yeah. Okay. So I will, you know, do the twin faint instead. So running up. Attack. Gonna do some rogue things and try to sk- steal the kill. That's a huh? miss. And we'll try more things. This one is, the second one's uh, flat-footed. I didn't give you a chance to put it on, but... Um, I believe that would have been it. That's a hit. Yay. Yippee! Um, again, this is, you know, the extra damage if it took precision damage. But I assume I don't have to roll that d6. You killed it! (laughs) Yay! (laughs) Let's go. <laughs> Dude, the ghosts love blood. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, it's it's ectoplasm. It's ectoplasm. It's ectoplasm. You're right. So you're right. the Sill did Sill things and killed the ghosts. Well, dissipated uh. the ghost. Let's be honest. It's a ghost. It's not going to actually die. Because Timothy knows all too well that ghosts yeah. generally have a rejuvenation period. Yeah. And if you want if you want to you can make uh you can make a check for me, Timothy. Yes, I will. How about yeah, do an esoteric? Yes. That should be it. I would say that would be it for Either that or what's the Occultism? No, you have you have haunt lore, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. No, haunt lore wouldn't work. Spirit lore would have, but not so yeah, either you could do either esoteric or um, religion or occultism. Any one of those. Uh, esoteric would work, too. I'm going to do esoteric. That's like the highest one he has. Okay, yeah. Make an esoteric check. <laughs> yeah, so you would you know that um, it'll be 2d4 days. Yeah. So um, about five days, you think, was when this five thing would, might might come back. Um, to the library to fully manifested. Mm. But you know, you also know that it could permanently be destroyed only if somebody successfully publishes the ghostwriter's work (laughs) to an audience of at least 100 readers. That's really funny. That's when the ghost would be satisfied. And its unfinished business would be completed, and it would move on to the afterlife. Yeah. Does Timothy see this book on it by any chance? As oh yeah, going you can tell that the book, the it, this thing was it was the book it was holding. Perfect. Timothy's gonna pick up the book, wipe off the ectoplasm, uh, looks to the party, says, "Yeah, so we got about five or so days before this thing comes back. Uh, no deal for us. We'll probably be." not here by then uh we can let the guy know uh they're gonna need to publish this book that way they can permanently get rid of it oh i mean i don't think we owe that guy anything after he let us come in here to uh not passive ghost yeah i think uh if anything this guy owes us a dinner now no yeah i i mean i'm I gotta go puke first, to be honest. Vesuvia, can you find the... I'm gonna be over here. Yeah, I got you. Because I'm still sickened. And, yeah. <laughs> I'll go ahead and take a look. I fear if I puke inside this room, it will eat through the floor, so... I well, will wait till the right. stinking cloud goes away and uh, do it in the main hall like a <laughs> proper gentle man. Did you say gentle... Toad in there somewhere? <laughs> no, no, okay. no, no. I am above these jokes, you fucking pleb. And then a- a- after about 30 more seconds, the cloud goes away. <laughs> it's been de-stinkified. Yep. And, so um, what lit and yeah. incense. <laughs> so, uh, Vesuviac, do you want to heal yourself, maybe? Uh, yeah. Uh, let's maybe see. make some treat wounds checks on yourself. While the yeah. while the others spend the three hours to Hey, Sil took damage too. Sil took all like two damage. Yeah, four damage, thank you. 
All right, and so I just do that treat ruins macro. Yeah, just and then just target yourself. Oh, I gotta do that really quick. T. Okay, and I'll warn you though, if you screw up more than once and keep injuring your teammates, Sil really doesn't trust you at all. Mm -mm. Oh, you healed yeah. yourself for seven yeah, there. So that's a heal. So yeah. So okay. that's ten minutes. And just however long it takes to get up to full. And just keep tracking that, and then... We have to wait an hour between, though, right? No, he has continual recovery, so it's really? only ten minutes. Nice! All right. That's so handy. Let's go ahead and do it again, then. Yeah, keep doing it. Every ten minutes, you can do it. Well, Timothy, do you want to start... Yeah. What oh! Critical success! Damn! Fifteen! That was a little insane. Okay, I think Good I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Subi just wipes himself off. I was like, all right, we're all good. All right, time to find a book. Yeah, <laughs> let's, yeah. Find let's, a map. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I do still have this cut now that I've seen oh, yeah. how good of a healer you are. Oh, yeah. Uh, it we're... kind of itches a little bit. Okay, oh, yeah. Don't I can, scratch it. I could treat wounds on you. Um, You're going to get ectoplasm pus into it. You don't want to do that. Oh, it's it's real nasty. I had a buddy just break out ectoplasm like groats. Another critical success. Good lord. Oh my god. <laughs> 25 on only four hit points. I needed all Volmo of it. couldn't roll a heal to save her life. Not Literally. even just regular yeah. success, but here we are. It's because you worshipped Abadar instead of Serenite. <laughs> I guess. Wasn't paying myself enough. Alright. That's awesome. Uh, so let's, let's make some checks here for um, to check the maps. Map time. All right. Uh, uh, I was checks. doing nature, right? Doing nature? Okay. Uh, and then I guess for mine, oh. would it be perception? Or uh, I'm trying to remember. You could do perception. Up. Yeah, it would. For you, it would be either perception. Or um. Yeah. I'd say perception probably would be the best. Yeah, perception. I think is the best one for. Eh. Hey, baby, that's a 24. I believe I'm just hey. going to stand in the doorway there you go. and yeah. reach up on top of the sill and carve my name into it with a fingernail. Um, <laughs> just like, where nobody's going to see it. Um, and just kind of hang out there. So, okay. So, multiple characters are doing this. And <clears throat> so after... It's still, are you helping? You're not? Okay. <laughs> So after four hours, then, <laughs> after four hours, Timothy manages to go ahead and find some information. So he would gesture like still over, like, "Hey, I uh, found something." I think I'd treat myself again during those four hours just to make sure I'm topped off. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You top yourself off there. So with uh, Sill and and uh, Vesuviak both taking a look at this, not Sill, I'm sorry, with uh, Timothy actually searching for the stuff and Vesuviak actually cross-referencing with the journal, you're able to discern and wipe away some um, some information here. And you are able to find three maps. One for each of the pieces that the jewel lies, that uh, which Poppy hid across the Indigo Isles. So three, map, the three maps to three islands. The maps indicate one fragment is actually here on Bluebell Island. There's a cave that looks like it's marked... In, and it's inside a dense woodland woodland forest just a few hours walk from Seaview. The second one looks like it's on an island called Moonshadow. Moonshadow Island. And so it's it this one's a bit a bit um gives you pause for concern because it's a bit too deep. In the in Moonshadow, which Moonshadow itself kind of has this these rumors, this like urban legend about it, mm -hmm. that there's like ill omens, 
and it's very up Timothy Timothy's alley. Yeah, like Timothy's Timothy, despite like having like, ooh, maybe it's like a bad vibe. You can definitely see like a smile is creeping up his face. Like, oh no, more ghost things. Oh no, whatever will he do? Now here's the uh, weird thing. Yeah. Here's the weird thing. The final piece looks like it's on a small rocky island. Mm. And based off of what you're reading from Gustavius's maps and Poppy's hints that Procta is sending back to you through these missives, it looks like the final piece is located on an island called Razorback Isle. But here's the problem. There's no such island as Razorback Island. And as a matter of fact, the section of the sea where Razorback Island should exist is known as Runaway Reef. And you you all know, especially especially uh, Zaba, who is a pirate, that Runaway Reef uh. is a very dangerous region, uh, region and that sailors avoid it because... The reef itself is too close to the surface, causing it's causing it's way too hazardous, and it does way too much damage to the hulls of ships. If there ever was an island in Runaway Reef, none of you have ever heard anything about it. Like it's, yeah, there's there's no mention of it. It's completely unknown to anybody that you know. Oh yeah, those are. Uh... Those are some uh, dangerous, you know, waters up there. You've been Real there? hostile. Have I been? Yeah. Ah, you know, we don't really go there so much as you end up there when you're stupid. Oh. Um, you know, when I had my small boats that I brought across from Chaliax, it was fortunate for me that I came down into not <laughs> runaway reef, but instead into nice island. And Timothy, on top yeah. of while you were searching for the maps, on top of that, you managed to find two scrolls. Woo! And I have here with me... There you go. Whoa! Over here in the shelves, you can double click on that little treasure box, and you can see the scrolls inside of there. Uh, right. I'm trying to see it. Uh, shelf, treasure. Right over here. <gasps> yes, I see it. Got it. I did it. Woo! Scroll of glitter dust and scroll of searing light. Which Ooh. you, as a scroll thaumaturge, yeah. you can cast any scrolls. Cool. As long what? as you make your esoteric lore check. Yeah. Which we uh, know is crazy high. Yeah. Timothy looks and I mean he said we could take if something was left behind the ghost. Yeah, Maybe because the, the this ghost? this doesn't look like it belongs this is yeah. you're positive this is not school property. Yeah. That it's... whoever the owner of this was is long gone because these scrolls are way old. Yeah, Timothy's gonna pick up these two scrolls. Uh, I loot. I loot the shelves. <laughs> I guess I press the loot button and I get those. Right. You, you no, you could actually just, your just drag them onto oh. your character sheet into the your inventory on your character sheet. Ooh, okay. Just click and drag thank them on, into there. Gotcha. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, Timothy. Uh, Ta or Timothy puts both of the scrolls in uh, his uh, in his actually his backpack and looks to Syl and he's like uh, found some things that are probably going to actually help us out in the future here and he's like studying them all he, he is very excited uh, but he still has that ghost journal in hand and he's trying to think about getting this ghost unfinished business done because that would help him sleep a little easier at night that this library would not be haunted. Uh, yeah. And and just as that's happening, Azaba, you're standing in the doorway, and you hear the voices of two university students as they come. Four hours in, I'd be laying in the doorway. Yeah, you're laying in the doorway. 
and you hear the voices of two uh, university students on the upper level of the of the building foyer as they're kind of walking around, making their way down, and it just sounds like they're gossiping to one another. You hear some some pretty interesting information. Yo, dude. So, did you hear like the uh, the dean de cuisine was murdered in his private kitchen earlier today? Like, totally killed with his own filleting knife. And the other students like, no way. Like, I can't believe it. They, are you sure? Um. So I heard, like, there was a senior student. And she was the last person to see the dean and was, like, seen fleeing from his kitchen. And they were carrying a bloody filleting knife. Oh, no way. So, I don't I don't know why, then. If, like, this is true, like, we shouldn't have to go to class, you know? Like, this is, you know... Like there's like it'd be totally futile, you know, to just go to class if the dean of cuisine's totally dead. Like, I don't know why they would want to. Like, maybe they just want to like keep it under wraps to you know like not cause a panic or something, you know. And that's where we're gonna end the episode. May your party never end. Uh, your party never ends. Your party never ends. The Jewel of the Indigo Isles Adventure Path is copyright 2023. All logos, titles, and artwork are property of Skyscraper Studios and Roll for Combat and used with permission. Pathfinder is a trademark of Paizo Incorporated. The theme music is written and performed by Robbie Whiplash.